everyone. Happy afternoon. Tuesday afternoon. Is it Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday afternoon. Happy Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> okay, that was a good start, wasn't it? All right, so this afternoon we are up to part six of finishing this pine six drawer dresser that we've been working on. We had, we've had about a week break simply because the weather's been crap and I haven't been able to sand. Um, I sand outside, I don't sand in here simply because it's, it's just too much dust. Um, so the weather stalled us for a minute. There was the weather and then my husband hasn't been around either and it was up on the table and I couldn't get it down by myself. So I finally got to sand today. Um, I had quite a big sanding session today. I got a few other pieces ready to go as well, but it's ready for its final stage, which is exciting. So we're just finishing the top. So as a quick recap for those of you who maybe haven't watched the previous videos, I do recommend you go back and watch the previous lives. Don't watch all of them, just have a quick scroll through um, so you can sort of see what we've been doing. But we have um, done this piece start to finish. So we have prepped, which was washing it down, scruff sanding, we've fixed um, the draw runners, that was a whole saga in itself. Um, removed, removed hardware, uh, we have primed with Pure Eco base and block it in the colour grey and then we have mixed our own custom colour um, which is this beautiful, hang on, there we go, this beautiful um, grey and we accidentally pretty much just mixed up the fossil. It was not meant to be, but that's pretty much the color that we created in the end. Um, so it was actually a mixture of fossil, snow, and brumby, which is our dark chocolate brown. Um, so we mixed our own color, we did two coats. I did um, do a few touch-ups yesterday, was it yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday, Saturday. I was here on Saturday doing another project. Um, so I did a few touch-ups, there was a couple more holes. This was one of those pieces where they've got brand new timber, they want to make it look old, so they whack it with some nails. And they put, and I'll show you a close-up in a second, they put lots of little nail holes all over it. This piece had a lot. So I did go through and quickly, I filled originally um, before we primed, before we did all that. Um, and there was still quite a lot after our first coat of paint, so I did go back through, fill a few more. Uh, painted our second coat of paint. There was still a few too many, um, so I did go back through and do just, it was on like two of the drawers, was still, they, they still had quite a lot. So I just, uh, I did, did that off camera. I quickly filled a couple more, did another coat of paint on there, and then some touch-ups on Saturday. Um, and now we're here today. So the top's been sanded back. I have used my Ryobi Orbital Sander, absolutely love it. Um, it's a really good price point as well for those who are just starting out. Um, I recommend all of Ryobi's tools. I really haven't had anything that hasn't been pretty good quality. Um, and for the price point, you can't go wrong. So I've used my Ryobi Orbital Sander today. I did 80 grit, 120, 220, no, 220, 240, 220 I think it was. And then... It was either 280 or 300, I don't know, somewhere in there. Um, so, worked my way up in grits, remembering the smallest, the smaller the number, the rougher the uh, grit of your sandpaper. Um, so you wanna use like an 80 to take off all of your finish, most of it to begin with, and then work your way up to get a nice smooth finish, um, which is what we're working with now. So we've got, it's a really, really nice timber. It is pine. But it's got like a really, it's got quite a nice grain to it as well. I'm just going to bring you in a little bit closer to show you what we're working with. Let me flip you around. Oops, hang on, sorry, that didn't help anybody. Button. All right. So this is what we're working with. So I've sanded the edges. So for this edge, because we've got this decorative trim, I've just sanded the very, very top one. I do have a couple of little tiny touch-ups that I need to do with my paint. Just where the sanders hit it, it'll take two seconds. And I do need to dust it all down still as well. All I've done so far is give the top a quick dust. As you can see on the top, all these little dark marks 
uh, um, those nail holes. And there is a lot of them. So I haven't sat there and tried to sand them all out. Instead, we're just going to work with it. It's part of the piece. Um, sanding this out, I could be here for days, to be honest. Um, some, Most of them are quite like, they're very, very shallow. Other bits, though, they are quite deep. And um, I don't want to end up with little, like, um, divots where I've sanded them out. So I've chosen just to leave it like this. The one thing I did get out, though, there was a couple of deeper marks that had the actual um, varnish in them, so I have made sure they're all gone. But now we've just got these little, few little pieces. The whole the whole piece still has these. I haven't hidden them all. It's part of the piece. It doesn't affect use in any way. It is purely cosmetic, but we're going to work with it. So we've got this beautiful colour on the base. Here we go. I also, the other day, when I pulled the drawers out, I did this bit down here, I did along the base, along the sides, just so when the drawers are in and out, you're not going to see that bit of timber, which is something that we discussed in our previous videos. All right, so we're going to do a paint wash on the top. I was thinking about a stain, but we're using up what we've got at the minute. So the two colours I've got, just while I'm holding the camera, we've got fawn, which I'm going to do first. It's a really nice lighter brown. And then I do have Brumby as well, which is actually in the colour that we mixed for this piece. But I think that's going to be too dark. I don't want to go light. I do want a bit of depth. So I'm thinking fawn. And let me show you the Brumby just for context. we got some other exciting stuff happening in here too at the moment. There's my little sanding pile. Coming over here, this little TV unit, the base of this is painted with... Fossil and the top has got the Brumby paint wash. We did that a couple of weeks ago um, on live, so you will be able to find that video. Um, so that's the Brumby. I think it's a little bit darker than what I want to go. I've got it set aside just in case, but we'll see how we go. On another note, we almost have signage. Our signs arrived, but they've got these great big creases in them they've arrived really really damaged so i've actually asked them to reprint and send again because i'm not super happy but we've almost got signage how exciting is that all right that's for another day i might even do a second live today
like so. So just like that, just moving it around. making sure that we get a nice even coat and right on cue we have run out of course we have let me mix a little bit more so we're going to do the same again so we're about 50 50 and then just a little splodge of oh of the brumby as well so this is the fawn so we're going to do about a 50 50 mix Oops, hang on, too far. <laughs> and a little splodge of the Brunby. That's plenty of that one. And we're going to add our water as well. So if you, if you do have to mix more, it's fine. Don't stress too much. Sometimes you your timber can be... Um, a little bit thirstier than other times as well. So if you do need to, if you do sort of go through it all too fast, just mix some more. It's not a major issue. Just sort of remember what uh, ratio you were working with as well. I'm going to move you down again. Let's come down this end. Where are we? There we go. I'll stand on this side so that I'm not in the sun and blocking it for you. So I'm just going to spritz it down again. It's just helping that flow across a little bit. And it's going to also help stop any line marks of where we've... Oops. Oops. Don't forget your edges either. So I'm doing this and then I'll do any touch-ups anywhere that I might have knocked it with the sander as well. Um, just this way, if I do get any stain anywhere it wasn't meant to be, um, it's super easy to just um, touch over it. It's not like it's not a big not a big issue if we do accidentally get stained anywhere we didn't want it. So we're just going to keep working that in. And now I've got it all over. So now I'm just going to spritz over it and keep working this stain until I've got it all. I'm just going to scoop up the last little bit in the bowl. And spritz down anywhere that I feel like needs a bit of movement. And we're just going to wipe over really gently. There's like no elbow to this. You don't have to use any pressure. It just goes on. I'm just wiping all the way down along, making sure I get those edges. I don't want to miss, miss my edges, so I'm just going to make sure that I get them. Beautiful. I really like this top. I think it's beautiful. It's very similar to, um, what colour am I thinking of? Driftwood, but not quite as brown, which I quite like. So I'm just really lightly spritzing it and then pulling, pulling my um, sponge over it. This isn't a very good show. I'm <laughs> My words are not working today. So I just want to make sure it's nice and even more than anything. Like so. I will pop the drawers back in in a minute. So we're just going to let this dry. It's not going to take very long. It will dry really, really quickly. It's quite warm in here at the moment, actually. We have the heater on most of the morning. Oh, yes, we have a heater. An actual working heater that's warm and toasty that actually heats the space. It's so exciting. Um, 
I'm just heating. Isn't it a brilliant concept? Um, right. We're going to let this dry for a second. While we're waiting for it to dry, I'm going to grab our drawers. Let's pop our handles back on. Just making sure I got all that front edge. Um, pop some handles on while we're waiting for it to dry. And then let's pop it back against the wall and we will uh, pop a coat of hemp oil on it as well. So why not? Let's do it all right now. Um, pop my sponges there and don't forget that I have to um, wash them. Move my bowl. I'm working like down in front of our staging wall so I don't have our typical space with all of the, um, with like my table right there to put everything on. So I'm walking everywhere today. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? All right, let's grab. I'm going to grab a couple of the drawers and my drill wherever I put that. Uh, which order were these drawers in? I don't know now. Mm -mm -mm. Top or bottom? Top, I think. I feel like you're at the top. Let's grab our drawers and a screwdriver. And let's put some drawers in while we wait for that to dry. It's only going to take a couple of minutes. Um, if I could find my drill, that'd be even better. This is such a good live today. Well done, me. There it is. It's not what I'm looking for, but it will do the job. I don't know where my drill went. I was using it earlier and now I've lost it. I don't know. I don't know. That's all right. All right. When I pop a drawer in, I feel like you're for that side. You're either for the top or for the bottom. We will find out in a second. No, nah, you're for the bottom. They were all stacked up all nice and neat, and then my husband moved them. So we're going to blame him for it today. So we're just going to put it down there. Woo! Right, number one. <laughs> Five to go. Number two. Oh, try not to drop them all. So my handles are still all. Are you on? You don't feel like you're on. Yep. Um, my handles are all still inside the drawers. So if you can, keep your handles inside your drawers. If you can't, um, just make sure that you keep them all together. We're going to be putting the original handles back on. They are really nice handles. They will actually go with it quite nicely. Uh, oops. There we go. There's three. Um, yeah, so we have decided, we have decided, I've decided we are putting the, I'm out of breath today. What is going on? I've, um, don't know, I'm struggling. I've, and I know that you can hear my heavy breathing, so I apologise. I don't know why I'm so out of breath. Normally I'm fine. Um, yeah, that goes in there. Um, we're putting the original handles back on this one because they um, because they've got these huge holes, and I didn't want to cover them. I didn't want to fill them because I feel like you can always see them. Um, if I was to do anything, I would have put a bigger handle on it, like a big long. Maybe a little bit chunkier as well because it is quite a heavy piece. But I didn't want to fill these holes because they're so massive. Um, so instead we've done this and we're just going to put the original handles back on because they're fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. Ooh. Um, we're just going to pop them back on instead of new handles. Yeah, because, because, I, because I did not want to fill in all of those holes because I just I feel like no matter what you do when it comes to handle holes I don't know whether or not it's everyone else but I feel like every single time that's all you can see you can see those holes so no matter how good that putty job is you can see them and it drives me nuts 
Um, so, yes, we've left them. Right, these handles, and I'll show you in a second, they are very nice handles. And I would pick them for most pieces as well. Um, but, yeah, it's one of those pieces. So, we did talk about the cost of this piece as well and how long it's taken us. Um, so, we'll do a little rundown on that in a second. Let me just grab a chair so I can get these handles on without hurting myself further today. Today feels like an injury kind of day where I've gotten really lucky so far, but I shouldn't push my luck any further. We've cleaned up my husband's shed. He has a new trailer, so we had to move everything to get that into the shed and just it's been a very, very long a very busy day, very long day. All right, so we're just waiting for the top. I can see a few of you just joined, so hello, welcome. Um, we're just waiting for the top to dry before we pop a coat of hemp oil on it. So while we're waiting for that to dry, let's pop these handle. Oh, pop these handles on and have a chat about our lean cost and how long it took us as well. Us, me, but you guys are part of this now, so. You've helped. Come on, open. Um, you have been part of the journey, so it is now your piece as well. <laughs> All right, so we've got these really nice handles. We are going to be putting back on. Oh, that one's got a bit of stuff on it. Hang on. It's got a little bit. It's at the bottom of the handle. It's just got like a little chip out of the stuff but let me oh it's better we're just going to do a little switcheroo it just had like a tiny little chip out of the enamel we're just going to switch them around that'll be fine that way it's at the bottom drawer and this one the nicer ones at the top where you're more likely going to see it so these handles they just like slide together and then keep your screws as well these screws are always handy to keep a hold of Excuse me, draw. I opened you. Um, oh, yeah, keep keep a hold of your screws because they do come in handy. Um, and when you've got a piece like this as well, sometimes you can get away with using the original screws. <coughs> um, so if you keep a hold of them, then and, and you can use them with whatever handles you put back on, if you put new ones on, it just saves you so much time in cutting um, cutting new screws down the length. This is one of those pieces where it's got like a drawer front, but then it's attached to the actual drawer. It's two separate pieces. Um, so being able to reuse it does come in handy as well. All right, so... Let's talk about our cost of this piece for those who are interested. So this piece cost me $90 when I purchased it. I did spend a little bit more on it than what I would normally spend on a piece. However, I thought it was a good investment. I knew I'd get a good set of lives out of this for me as well. Um, and I've, won, I've never done, I've actually never done a dresser like this before. Um, I've done a few six and nine drawers, but... <coughs> not like this I've done a mid-century one years and years ago and sorry um what else have I done I've done another one oh I've done one of those um where's my water bottle gone nobody knows oh hang on it's over here um and I've done one of those MDF ones with like the scroll work on the front and that was a while ago so I haven't done this particular style before <coughs> and I was excited to um, do something different. So I did spend a bit more on it than normal. I generally try to keep my cost around $50, $60 mark for most pieces. Not all of them, but for most. If it's something a bit special, I'm always happy to spend a bit more. If it's something that I know I'm going to get some really great content out of, um, some good lives, YouTube videos, that sort of thing. I'll always happily spend more. But 
because I do do this to resell, obviously I need to keep that sun's banging my eyes. Um, I do need to obviously keep my costs down that little bit lower. So $90. Um, I don't sit down, as I previously said, I don't sit down and like add up my costs exactly like I spent this amount. Which one are you? That side. There we go. Um, I don't sit here and like I've used 10 mils of paint so it's cost me this much. I don't do that at all. Um, honestly, I'm not like I don't think I'm getting enough. I don't think that's giving me enough information to sort of do it, so I just round it up. Normally, I just round it up to like either I know a 200 ml jar. Um, my paint brushes, we have actually dropped our paint prices too. My cost hasn't changed, but your cost has. Um, $23 for a jar of 200 ml. I know that I've used around 200 ml. Um, I've actually used paint that's left over, but. I'd, I'd round it up and I'd round it out sort of thing and say, yeah, well, I've used about 200 ml, so about 20-something dollars of paint. Um, and I include my primer in that as well. Oops, wrong way around. Hang on. I've got to touch the handle before I put it on. That was clever. Um, what else? Yeah, primer. And then you've got like your, yes, um... What do you call them? Your tools and your accessories and all that sort of thing. Um, so we've got like our sandpaper. Um, sandpaper, obviously we've uh, got our putty, etc. as well. We've got our sandpaper from sanding the top. I did, this finish did come off pretty easy, but I did go through a couple of discs of sandpaper. I think like the total cost of that would have been a couple of bucks. Um, my putty, etc. it was such a minuscule amount, even though it was a lot. Come on, are you doing it? Even though it was a lot, it wasn't like so much that it was like, oh my gosh, I've used a whole $30 jar of putty on this. Like, um, if I'd done, if I used that sort of amount, then sure, I'd include the full cost, but I've used such a small amount, um, I just ran it up to say a dollar and uh, leave it at that. Um, what else? Handles, obviously, I'm reusing the original handles. If you have gone and brought new handles for a piece, obviously, handles can get really expensive depending on where you're buying them from and what you're getting. You could be paying upwards of $10, $15, $20 a handle. For a piece this size, if I was to replace handles, I would try to keep them under $10 a handle. Ideally, it's six handles. It is a lot. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Obviously, I've reused the handle, so there's no extra cost there as such. Um, we didn't end up needing to replace the runners. I just had to spend about an hour of my time instead um, unscrewing them all, re-screwing them all back in with... Which way do you go? Um, re-screwing them all back in... Oh, hang on. <laughs> my brain can't talk and put handles on at the same time, apparently. Um... Yeah, re-screwing them all back in. So that took me time-wise rather than cost. Um, so I spent about an hour doing hin uh, doing the runners. It's taken me maybe 10 minutes to do the handles. Um, each coat of paint, yes, I was, I was doing a live with each coat. So there was a lot of talking and I get quite distracted, as we all know. Um, my brain sometimes can't do both at once. But each coat of paint, um, all up only took me about half an hour. Um, so we've got three coats of paint, one primer, two coats of paint, and then touch-ups. So I'd round it up and say it's taken me about two hours to paint this piece. The sanding took me about half an hour this morning. <coughs> and I would say another half an hour or so of um, time actually prepping this piece as well. So doing my clean and my scruff sand um, and wipe down before we put our primer on as well. So all up, I've put, <coughs> with today, I've put about four hours of time into it, I think. 
approximately. Um, I think my maths is right there. Two hours of painting. Two hours of painting? Yeah, it was about half an hour each coat. So about two hours of painting, half an hour of sanding. That's two and a half hours. Um, so half an hour all up putting our handles and doing our finish just then. That's three hours. What else was I doing? Oh, and an hour of the runners. So about four hours. Um, so four hours. I'm going to round my cost up of this piece um, and say the piece cost me $90. My tools, supplies, um, look, if you want to get finicky, the electricity for the sander, oh, I'm going to round that up to about $20. Um, I haven't used a full jar of any paint. I have used paints that I've already got as well. Um, so all up, I'm in it for, what's that, $110 and four hours of time. I do charge, well, I don't charge by the hour. Um or when I'm working at commissions, I do sort of, I know it's going to take me this long, um, so I roughly work out my hourly. Um, I normally, my hourly sits between $50 and $75, um, depending on what I'm doing as well. So say $50 an hour, um, we've already got 110 in it, so and we've spent about four hours, so that's another 200 so $310. Um, I'm going to be listing this piece. I think it's come up absolutely gorgeous, and I think I'm going to put four ninety five on it, so five hundred dollars. So about two hundred dollars profit in this one, on top of my hourly, which and I don't count my hours in my cost. Um, if I pay myself, I pay myself from it. I might take fifty dollars out of it and buy some groceries. Not that that gets me very far anymore, but I don't pay myself an hourly wage anyway. Um, I pay myself when I can from the business, um, which this month's been a few more times than normal, but well, a few more times than the previous couple of months, but we're starting to get to that point this month where we're not quite there yet. We're not quite comfortable, but we're getting there. Um, but we're used to living on a very low income, so it's fine for us. So, um, yeah, four hours work, about $110 cost. Um, all up. I think that's pretty good. I'm really happy with that. So we've got one lot of handles on. Let's pop this other lot of handles on. The top's almost dry and then we're going to pop some hemp oil on it. Come over here. Let's do this one as well. Um, my gosh, God. These bottles are like rubbish. All the labels fell off. And they crinkle and crush and they are just rubbish. Now, I do have to, I'm going to stage this afternoon. Um, I do have to do a couple of little touch-ups. There's a little bit here. Um, there was a piece down, I think it's the bottom of that drawer. Um, just like, it's like a spot. It's not much. It's nothing, like most people won't even notice it. Um, it's just enough that I want to, and there's one little spot over here on the corner of the top, just where the sand has hit it. Um... Oh my gosh, this morning um, that I need to touch up as well. So a couple little touch-ups, but we're going to, oh my God, stop dropping it. Uh, we're going to pop our handles on, do our hemp oil. Then I'm going to do a couple of touch-ups really quickly. Which way? Yep, that's the one. A um, couple of touch-ups really quick, and then I'm going to stage and list it for sale this afternoon as well. So now it's done. <laughs> Now we finally got the sanding done. It was like a week delay on that. I wanted this done and listed by like Thursday last week. But with that crappy weather, um, and then my husband wasn't here for several days. It was meant to, he was originally going to be here yesterday. I don't know what happened Friday. Something happened Friday. He wasn't here Friday for some reason either. I don't know. Yesterday he wasn't here because he went to Melbourne. But there was just a few delays, and because it was up on the table, I couldn't get it done by myself. It's not too bad with the drawers not in it, but um, it is. It's still like it's a heavy piece. It's a solid piece. It's big, and I'm I'm only little. Like I'm not so short. Come on. Every now and then you get a screw that just does not want to screw in. If you've got um, if you are reusing screws and any of them are like really 
um, just shredded and the screwdriver, and you'll know what I mean, the um, screwdriver or drill just will not sit in them properly anymore. Replace those screws because if you ever have to or if somebody else ever has to take those screws back out for whatever reason, um, it's just an absolute nightmare. Trying to get a screw out that doesn't want to come out because it's not in condition to do so. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's just not fun. So replace them if you can. Um, you can normally buy like um, bulk packs of screws in all different sizes. You normally get them for like the five, around the five dollar mark. Um, I always have heaps of spares anyway, but occasionally I do like to grab a couple of packs of different sizes. Two of the, these ones, these are for handles specifically. They've got a flat top. They don't drill in. They have to go into something like a handle. Um, if you can have a, like a spare pack of these hanging around, it does. It's just when you're trying to put handles in and you don't have any spare screws or the ones that you do have spare are all the wrong size, it is really handy to have a new packet as well. But I always keep these screws, unless they're um, absolutely stuffed and they can't be used, I always keep these screws because I can guarantee I will need that exact size at some point. Um, out of everything that I keep, it's, hang on, what have I done there? That goes the other way. That's not going to work. Hang on. Let's flip it around so I can put my handle in. Um, <clears throat> can't do this and talk at the same time as oh my god as we've now learned i don't enjoy putting these this style of handle on they're pretty they're easier than some but i've had enough of them to be honest six drawers is enough so i'm gonna get this one done and then we have got a coffee table coming in i think it's coming in thursday for commission um that I'm um, sorry, a custom job that I'm going to be doing. So you guys can join me for that makeover as well. We're painting it with, I think, um, the clients coming in. Hang on, no, I've got to tighten that. Clients coming in Friday, I'm pretty sure, to confirm what color. But I think we're going to be doing it in pure eco silk finish in the color morning, which is this really pale baby blue. Um, and I'm so excited to do it. I don't normally do pieces as big as this TV unit either. But um, I'm excited to do it because it's a colour that I haven't done before. And when she said that, I'm like, oh, yeah, all right, then I'll do it for you. Um, I was so worried she'd say white or something, but she didn't. Uh, she said morning, which I'm really, really excited about. So we're going to be doing that one in a live. And then we have also got uh, on my husband's little day out yesterday. He brought me back a couple of pieces as well. So we've got a beautiful dressing table. Um, oh, that is just, it's stunning. Um, so I sanded that back this morning. We're going to do a, uh, I think we're actually going to do a paint wash on that one too because I don't want it um, super, I don't want it to, hang on, put that in there first. I, oh, my gosh. Um, I don't want it to. Light, so unless I do driftwood, maybe I don't know. I'm still trying to decide, but I want it. Oh, wrong side. I want it light and bright, so I'm still trying to decide a color. But I did get it sanded this morning, but that will be either just a video or it will be a live. I do prefer lives because <laughs> live spend that I don't have to sit there and edit them. Um, videos I get really finicky with, I spend way too long editing them. Um, lives are just easier most of the time, right. Last handle, thank goodness. Let's get this hemp oil on. I'm excited to get this one done now. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll be a paint wash. It might be a stain, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a paint wash. And it's going to be all over as well. I think I'm only going to paint um, one little section, um, I think. I think that's the plan. Um, so we're going to do that. What else are we doing? What else did he bring in? Oh, I've got like a little, it was meant, It was listed as a whole table, but it's really not a whole table height. It's like down here on my thighs. It's so low. Um, so we're going to do doing that as well. We've got a lot happening. 
we've got a lot happening. This weekend, is it this weekend? Yes, this weekend we have got auctions as well. So we're going to have heaps of new people, or I hope, we're going to have heaps of new pieces coming in. Um, I'm just going to grab my hemp oil, guys. And then what else is happening? I don't know. There's always something happening around here. Um, I don't know. Let's do this because my brain stopped working. <laughs> Hang on, we're too close back this way now. All right, so, oh, my gosh, it's heavy now. I should have moved it back properly first, but anyway. Hemp oil. Let's seal this in the same video. I'll edit the title of it for you um, so you know what we're doing. I'm going to get all these videos up on our YouTube as well. Curico Hemp Finishing Oil. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful product. It is all natural. It's eco-friendly. Um, it is so, so hydrating for your timber um, and produces just a beautiful, beautiful finish. So I've shown you guys hemp oil and wax so many times, but I'm going to show you again because it's always so much fun. So let me bring you in for a second. Let's just have a close-up look of this piece before I'm just going to bring the whole tripod because it's easier before we hemp oil it let's go down this end so I'm not in the sun as much all right so we're looking really really nice but we do look it looks pretty flat there's not it's not popping quite yet so you'll find as you put the hemp oil on timber really starts to come to life a little bit and all you need is your hemp oil, little chip brush. These are like five or six bucks on our website. They're really, really cheap. Um, I use them a lot. Some sort of sandpaper. You want a nice fine grit. This is 1,200 grit. Use whatever you've got, um, but the finer the better. You can also use um, steel wool as well. Uh, I think it's 4 0 4-0 steel wool. Really, really fine, fantastic. And you want to have some sort of rag for you to, um, I'm saying I'm a lot today and it's really starting to annoy me, to be honest. And I'm going to say it again. And I don't want to say it again. <laughs> you want some sort of rag to wipe, to buff off the excess um, hemp oil. All right. Little schwuzzle. Just a little bit, and then you're going to spread that out. And that was quite a lot, and we're going to really, really spread that out now. And you're going to brush it all over, and you'll really start to see the colour that you've chosen to stain and the actual timber come to life with your hemp oil as well. This timber is very thirsty. It's soaking this in like there's no tomorrow. So you're just going to spread it out. It does not have to be perfectly spread out because you're going to do your little sand in a minute as well. That's also going to help it. Why don't you? There we go. You're just going to spread that hemp oil out best you can. But when you do your little sand as well, that's also going to help spread this as well. All right, so you don't have to... Stress too much and pop your hemp oil on. You see that difference in colour already. So this is what we're after. This is why we hemp oil. You can take your sandpaper. You're going to let your sandpaper do the work. And you're really, really lightly going to sand over your timber. Now this is going to knock back those fibres of your timber. And this is how you get that baby bottom smooth finish. You know that finish that you just got to keep going up and touching? This is how you get that feel. So, And you're just going to let it do its thing. It's going to push that oil into your timber. It's going to take off any excess um, paint or stain that you've got on there as well. And it's going to knock back all those little fibres that are right now having a little party standing up. So you're just going to come along and bulldoze them. It doesn't matter what direction you sand in because this is so fine. You're not going to scratch up your timber. 
and you're just going to keep going. I just do it for a minute or two. You can always go back along. Oh, go away, fly. Um, I thought that was a bee then. You just uh, go along and you can always, sorry, you can always go back along. If there's any spots that you sort of missed or sometimes you'll have a spot that just needs a little bit of extra help as well. So, like so. Then you're going to grab your cloth. Clean, oh, clean lint-free cloth. You don't want to use something that's full of lint and fluff because it's just going to put it everywhere and cause issues. And your cloth um, should just be sliding along beautifully. It shouldn't feel like it's catching. If it's feeling like really catchy and rough, like it's just not going, um, like it's not smoothing over it nicely, then give it another sand. But it should just be gliding over that surface like so. Rotate your cloth a few times as well. Like so. And you can see that difference in colour as well. So that's brought out those brown tones, which is what I was hoping we'd do. Isn't that beautiful? Let me bring you a bit closer. Let's go down to the next section. Actually, I'm going to bring you down this end. Now we're going to do the whole... Whoops. Sorry. We're going to do all of this bit. Oh, it feels so nice. So you touch as your best friend with this technique. Oh, that was probably a bit more than what I needed, but that's all right. This is drinking it in anyway, so we should be fine. I'm just making sure that I spread it out pretty much straight away so it doesn't have a chance to sort of soak in and leave a line. There we go. As well, normally I wouldn't just pour it on, but this seems to be okay. So, Or I'd just do like a little dot and then spread it rather than doing it like this. But this is what we're doing today. To be honest, I'm a bit... As much fun as this piece has been, and I've like ticked another style of furniture off my list. It's been a bucket list item for a while. I am bored. I need to do something fun. And now with this extra commission and stuff coming in, I don't know, I'm going to have to find a little side project, I think, in all this free time that I've got. <laughs> I am... Um, bit bored. Like it's a great piece. It's beautiful. It did come up amazing. The transformation is gorgeous on it. It did, does really suit the piece so I am glad that we went with this colour. But I am bored and sometimes it's nice just to mix things up a little bit as well. I'm not a neutrals person. I like my colour. This is about as light as you're going to get me going. You'll never see me do like a full-on white, white piece. I vowed many years ago to not do that anymore. <laughs> I have ever did a couple, but quite a while ago, I said, nope, no more. I think it was a commission, the last one I did, and I said, I'm never doing it again. It's just, it's boring, it's hard work. I'm up for hard work, but not when it's boring as well. <laughs> All right, so we're just sanding that oil in again, knocking back all those fibres, giving us a nice, smooth, beautiful finish. And it doesn't matter if your oil's not alike on every single section either because this sandpaper is going to help spread that around. If you have still got a spot that you've really just missed, you can still go along and add some to it as well. All right, just like so. Looking good. A little bit more of a sand. I'm being patient today. I've sort of had enough today. I want to go home. I just want to get this done now. It's like that final stretch. Last thing we've got to do. We're so close.
Fine. Nicely sanded. Like so. Grab your cloth. Now wipe over it first and just sort of remove that excess and then we'll switch our cloth over so we're not just sort of spreading it all around. Just rotate it a few times. It does make a bit of a difference. And then we're just going to give it a really, really good buff. You can go in any direction you like. You're just removing that excess. And it is really, really important important that you remove the excess. If you leave the hemp oil on there, you're going to end up with a really sticky, horrible mess as it starts to cure. It's very hard to remove. So um, make sure that you do buff this really, really well when you first apply the hemp oil. Don't leave it on for a day and then come back and buff it. You need to be buffing it um, within sort of half an hour of applying it, really. Can give it a little bit more of a sand. Again, it doesn't matter what direction we go. Beautiful. Another little buff. And then I'm going to come back tomorrow. I am going to stage this and list it for sale today. But I am going to come back tomorrow morning, have a feel of it, have a look at it. If it's feeling like it's a little bit dry in a few spots, I am going to... Um, I will come back and I'll give it another little buff as well if it, if it needs it. It doesn't always, but sometimes it, uh, it just needs a second buff. It's soaked in as much oil as it can overnight and just needs a bit of help. Um, other times it might feel a little bit dry. Um, it might even look dry as well and it might just need an extra, an extra uh, coat of hemp oil as well. So you sort of just play it by ear. Every piece is different. Um, most pine pieces I find generally they need a quick, light buff the next day. But apart from that, like, they're good to go. So as you're going, your cloth will feel it as well, but just sort of run your hands over it. If there's a lot of oil sitting on there, go over it again. If it's feeling rough at all, like just there. Give it another really light sand. Don't forget to do your edges. We want all them feeling nice as well. That feels heaps better just there. Come around. I'm just going to do this edge up here and then we'll come around the front. Don't forget your edges. There's nothing worse than having a really nice soft top and then you're running your hands along and you realise all those edges haven't been finished. <coughs> Excuse me. Like so. Run our cloth along the edge as well. Feeling absolutely divine. It's looking beautiful. That colour's come out beautifully. I'm really, really, really happy with this piece. Let me just put the hemp oil down and give you a little close-up look before we say goodbye for the day. Absolutely stunning. I'm so happy with this piece. It's come up really, really well. I'm just going to pop you out of here.